Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and here's a headline from Forecast News. Non-U.S. XRP investors petition for congressional investigation of SEC. And so I've talked about this topic before, and there's some interesting updates within this piece. And uh, attorney John Deaton uh, is clearly fighting for the, uh, the XRP investigation that we all deserve. Uh, very thankful for that. He's, he's continually bringing the heat. Uh, I'll tell you, the drive he clearly displays every single day is rather impressive, and I'm appreciative just like the next guy, every, every other individual in the XRP community here. But, uh, you know, there's something I've said on this channel a number of times, which is basically a, a comment along the lines of, you know, the only people that are making the arguments that the SEC is making about XRP actually being by the nature of it existing an unregistered security. Like the only people making those arguments are the attorneys at the SEC. There's no one else, except with rare exception. And I've said, if you can find a, an attorney outside of the SEC that will actually take the SEC's position and defend that, you have found a unicorn. That is officially a unicorn. Uh, yes, I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a horse with a little, little freaking you know, horn poking out of its forehead. That it is a unicorn, super rare. Well, I'll tell you what, such a creature has been spotted within this article from Forecast News. There is a lawyer who is defending the SEC, and apparently that must mean that we're all living in Looney Tunes land, right? We're taking crazy pills, right? And I'll tell you here at the outset too. Uh, one of my fellow XRP YouTubers has invited this attorney on his channel along with attorney John Deaton to talk about this. So we'll see if that comes to pass, but there is an open invitation. I'll give you the specifics. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So let's go ahead and dig right in because there's oh so much to talk about here. More than 17,000 people have signed a petition calling for the United States Congress to investigate the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission for impropriety and conflict of interest in bringing a lawsuit against Ripple Labs, owners of 55% of all the XRP cryptocurrency mined. So let's pause right there. Obviously, there's an, in there's an inaccuracy that I cannot let go. It's not, that it's not actually a big deal, but uh, XRP was not mined. There was no mining. All XRP was created at the inception. Uh, that's it. So I just, I, I can't read something like that in not com. It's just super difficult for me. But anyway, peace continues. The petition on change.org was begun January 19th uh, by attorney John Deaton to give voice to non-U.S. investors of the XRP token. The petition states that foreign investors in XRP were, quote, grievously harmed rather than protected by the by the agency, end quote, when the SEC sued Ripple Labs in December 2024, allegedly selling XRP as an unregistered security. And here's another quote. The international holders weren't having their voice heard, and it's frustrating, end quote, uh, said Deaton in an interview with Forecast. And here's another quote from him. Uh, they've been frustrated because of the impact that the United States has on them, and so... It really is a way for them to make sure their voice is heard. Peace continues. The SEC filed suit against Ripple and two executives, alleging that XRP token is an unregistered digital asset security. The closely watched SEC v. Ripple Labs case is expected to be decided or settled this year and will likely determine whether XRP is a security under U.S. laws. Crypto investors question why Bitcoin and Ether have not been held to the same standard. Deaton represents over 63,000 XRP investors from more than 60 countries and the U.S. as friends of the court in the closely watched lawsuit SEC v. Ripple Labs. He said many foreign investors are citizens of countries that have officially determined XRP is not a security and have been harmed because the actions of the SEC suit has impeded the growth of XRP. And here's a quote. The Japan Financial Services Authority has said that XRP is not a security. The United Kingdom's Financial Conduct Authority has said XRP is not a security. Singapore, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, they've all come out and said XRP is not a security. 
And so since we're such a global economy and the U.S. is such an important market, it impacts these international holders. And that's a direct quote from Attorney John Deaton, and he's absolutely correct in hitting the nail on the head. The only government on the entire planet that is arguing that XRP is a security is the United States government. And even then, m m mind you, they're only in legal hot water with one government agency within the federal government, and there's no shortage of various agencies within the United States for federal government, just to be super duper clear. So almost nobody on the planet actually th thinks these things, but it's still a very serious concern. It's a very serious situation. If this doesn't go the way we all think and hope that it will, there are going to be very negative ramifications for crypto as an asset class uh, within the United States specifically it would be most terrible here where I live in the United States. But there would be reverberations throughout the entire world if this doesn't go well. I can only imagine what it'll do to markets. But And they'd rebound it. But it, it's just, it would end up being the case that if XRP is actually a security, by the nature of it existing, then everything's a security except for maybe Bitcoin. You know, there'd be almost no exception. Anyway, Pete's continues though. He has created a dossier and a timeline that indicate... SEC officials may have colluded with outside parties to regulate cryptocurrencies in line with their personal financial interests. Uh, the petition states that. Now, Deaton says on his law firm's website that the evidence shows the SEC may have given Ethereum a regulatory free pass. The implication that the SEC... Oh, yeah, this is where it gets good. So this is where the attorney, the unicorn that I referenced at the outset of the video, this is where he makes an appearance in this piece. Check this out. Uh, the implication that the SEC acted illegally is, quote, out of bounds and inappropriate, end quote, said Richard Levin, partner and chair of the fintech and regulation practice of law firm Nelson Mullins Riley and Scarborough. So there you go. He's an attorney with that firm. And he says that, uh, the, <laughs> I can't believe this. The implication that the SEC acted illegally is out of bounds and inappropriate. So the SEC's rights on the facts and circumstances of this case, they were completely appropriate. Right. Okay. Peace continues. Levin likened the SEC to a football referee, referee relying on a rule book. And here's a quote. Attacks on the SEC are unwarranted. Oh, are they? So all, all of these criticisms, folks, think about this. All these criticisms that the tens of thousands of people in our community have, uh, it's, it's all completely unwarranted. We're a bunch of lunatics, aren't we? We're a bunch of crazy people for thinking that we should have an even equal distribution of justice within the crypto space. We are absurd for this. We are the asshats, not the SEC. We are the asshats. Oh my gosh, we just needed to look in the mirror to see it. Okay, thank you for that, Richard Levin. Um, so that's what he said in the interview with Forecast. And here's the last quote from him. They have a job to do. Well, you know what, Richard? They do have a job to do. And it has nothing to do with being asshats, or at least it's not supposed to anyway. But they are. There's so much asshattery going on at the, this, this government agency, the SEC. Uh, they're supposed to protect investors. They've harmed investors. It could not be more clear. I, I just For this guy to have this position... I, I just, I, it makes me wonder to what degree has he actually looked into the, the facts and circumstances of the SEC v. Ripple Labs case? To what degree has he looked into this? Or did he just look at maybe some surface things and come to a conclusion and he's like, ah, I can speak, I'm a lawyer, I'm going to speak in this article on Forecast News. Ah, it was, was it one of those things where he, he's just kind of like haphazardly throwing caution into the wind and just speaking out even though he's not sufficiently informed on the topic? Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know, but he's way off base here. I'll say that. Pete continues. Levin also said the petition has an extremely low chance of success. And here's a quote. When one party controls the executive branch and two parts of Congress, and it's an election year, the notion that Congress is going to act on any petition is hopeful at best, he said. Well, look, politics, fine. Politics, politics. Got it. It doesn't mean don't try to make sure justice is done. Are you kidding me? Fine. It's fine. Again, I, I get it. I understand the nature of politics, but you still got to fight for what's right. Peace continues. The petition is addressed to Senator Sherrod Brown and Pat Toomey, who lead the Senate Banking Committee, and Representatives Maxine Waters and Patrick McHenry, who lead the House Financial Services Committee. Deaton said he believes his target of 25,000 signatures would, quote, increase the likelihood, end quote, of an investigation, despite the fact that no member of the United States government is elected by or represents the interests of non-U.S. citizens. 
Whether the petition actually represents only foreign investors is not clear, however. Uh, Change.org asks, asks for country, state, city, and zip code and did not block a U.S. citizen from signing it recently. Deaton's office was unable to provide the countries of which the signers were uh, were, uh, were citizens or residents. And by the way, John Deaton did put out a tweet, and I saw this. I don't think I have it pulled up for this video. But he actually does have that information. It's just he has to go to manually, he has to like manually go through to figure out how many people are in what country, so on and so forth. So the data is actually there. Uh, and, and people should not, if you're in the United States, you should not participate in this, uh, in, in signing this, this particular petition. Uh, it, it's actually counterproductive and you're, you're harming the cause if you do that. So John Deaton's made that very clear. He's respectfully requesting that only people outside of the United States participate if they so choose. Nobody in the United States, though, you are actually making the situation worse if you do that, just to be super duper clear. So let's respect what John Deaton has to say on that. And then the article wraps up by stating, there's also the matter of how XRP investors from any nation have been harmed by the SEC's lawsuit. In the 13 months since the, the, the suit was filed, the price of XRP has actually risen 36%. To around 61 cents. Yeah, so here's the thing. For those that held, yes, it's up higher than what it was before this. What about the people that were intimidated, and understandably so, when the SEC claimed that XRP is actually a security of Ripple? What about those people that, that sold? Because they, I, I got to admit, like that, that's different than panic selling because price goes down based on emotional humans. That's totally different. This went down for a fundamental reason, which is the SEC made a huge and completely... Uh, inaccurate claim so what about those people that were just trying to protect themselves as xrp price was plummeting what about those people you know just because the price went up way later well actually it wasn't even way later it you know went to two bucks just about in april of last year fine that's not lost to me what about all the other people that actually were harmed you know it's very so it's, you know to write that it's not clear who's been harmed. it's very clear who's been harmed those people that reacted trying to save themselves from additional financial harm that was brought about by the SEC's bogus claims. So I'll, I'll just say that. Uh, and so then there was this from attorney John Deaton. He was referencing, he quoted part of the article in this tweet here. And this is from just this morning. Attacks on the SEC are unwarranted, said Richard Levin, partner of the law firm Nelson Mullins, Riley, and Scarborough. In the article, he likened the SEC to a football referee. And then he tagged, John Deaton tagged, my fellow XRP YouTuber, the digital asset investor, and wrote, I welcome attorney Levin to have a discussion about the impartiality of the referee. So John Deaton would like to have a little chat with Richard Levin here, which would be interesting to observe here. Um, I'm kind of skeptical because if, this, if Richard looks into this more, I think he's going to realize that uh, he's a bit out of his league at this point and to, to have the opinions that yeah that's why i keep saying like the attorneys that actually take the side of the sec they're, they're unicorns they're that rare they're super hard they exist but they're super duper hard to find and so that's why if, if he were actually going to consider doing this i think he'd realize quickly that his stance is um completely unreasonable that that would be my expectation so i'd be surprised if this happened i would love to see it though and so then uh, the digital asset investor uh, wrote the following on twitter here he wrote Richard, so this is the attorney, Richard, who is not on the side of XRP holders, let's see, he's on the side of SEC. Richard has an open invitation to come on my show with attorney John Deaton to go over the Ethereum free pass timeline and show us where we are being out of bounds and inappropriate. I double dog dare him to come on if we ever see those 63 emails the SEC won't release. Yeah, that would be something. And then he also wrote... What really irritates me about this is the snobbery we've observed by the elite D.C. attorney community towards John Deaton. These people hold all us average people in contempt. The peasants aren't supposed to talk back. Well, I'll just say, I can't know for sure what's in the hearts and minds of people, but that idea has certainly crossed my mind based on some of the way certain things have been written over the last year in particular. Uh, yeah, the idea of snobbery and uh, just people... Uh, holding the average person, a uh, typical XRP holder, in contempt. There's probably some truth to that. Not everybody. Not everybody's like that, but there's probably some truth. I, I tell you, when I think about people like that, I, I more frequently think of uh, uh, SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gary and that asshat Jay Clayton. I typically think of them first. <sighs> Wouldn't you love to see this, though? I sure as hell would. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm gonna, I'm, I'd am gonna. i be willing to bet not. But, hey, weird things in life happen sometimes. Let me know what you think below. But the, oh, actually, no, no, no. Before wrapping up, let me highlight this. 
Uh, this is the uh, this is the actual petition to Crypto Law International Connect to Congress. And here you can see that there are, at the time I'm recording this, 18,631 people have signed this, trying to get to 25,000. So um, I'll go ahead and leave this in the description of my video below. If anybody um, internationally would, would like to uh, participate in this, you've got the option to. I'll, I'll put the link below. But, uh, I will go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.